Hi everyone. So today uh, I want to speak about George Gurdjieff. Really amazing guy, great Russian mystic. He lived in the beginning, better to say, first half of 20th century. And some of you may know him pretty well, and some of you, of course, not. I think that we may um, say that uh, he was the man who was one of founding fathers of modern esoteric tradition. The very first step of his philosophy, his philosophy of life, is actually very strange and unusual. It was 1910 when he met his um, main disciple and actually co-worker later on, uh, Ospensky. He told to Ospensky that each and every man is machine. It's really difficult to find somebody who is really human being at all. Sound quite strange. What does it mean that almost nobody is a human being? Everyone is just machine. And the quality of the machine, which Gurdjieff describing to his disciples, is mainly three. One of them is just life based on reaction. Just examine your own life, day to day. Mostly our life is the set of reactions, absolutely unconscious reactions. That our life is based on conditioning. There are many kinds of conditioning, religious, ethnic, social, so many, and all of them, visibly or invisibly, trying to coordinate our life, and really with a great success. Most of your decisions and actions based on conditioning, simple primitive reactions, and of course one more, it's just habit. Yeah, really, most of the people are results of habits. Yeah, people are sleeping and they're not conscious about the fact that they are sleeping and of course they don't want to be awake. That's how life happens. If we take just imaginary two guys, just for example, just the first guy has family, children, working hard in the office, making money. Okay, and the second guy decided to leave behind all that office life, family, children, and went directly to the ashram, any ashram, Himalayas. Mostly, we think that, okay, the second guy who decided to shift, to jump, to escape to the Himalayan ashram is the spiritual seeker. Especially if spiritual seekers have, you know, special orange dress with a rosary, etc. Well, what does it mean spirituality? For example, if I am practicing meditation every day. If I'm learning Sanskrit, if I'm 
you know, great expert in all kinds of Vedic, Christian, and the Buddhist scriptures. Am I spiritual at all? If I am practicing mantras, mantras, and mantras every day, may I call myself as the real spiritual seeker? This is the question. So, Gurdjieff was a really interesting guy. And in the beginning of 20th century, he told his disciples that to be spiritual seeker, you have to be conscious, to be here and now. You know, in a modern esoteric tradition, it's very famous to speak about state of here and now. But really, it was exactly George Gurdjieff, crazy Russian guy who spent second part of his life actually in Europe and in the United States. He was the one who first introduced this idea of you know this mysterious state of to be observer to be conscious to be present right here and right now and it was really Gurdjieff who told to the Westerners who explained to his disciples this crucial question actually who am i this kind of question sound very very much like vedanta yeah that's really so Gurdjieff uh, traveled a lot when he was young in a different oriental countries like um, afghanistan india even tibet he was in Egypt, in Palestine, in Greece. He was learning different, different spiritual traditions and learned from them. So, finally, he put this question in front of his disciples. Who am I? What does it mean this I am this. What does it mean self-existence? What is the source of my existence? What does it mean consciousness? What does it mean this simple and strange word I or I am or self? Okay. I may speak about Gurdjieff quite for a long time, but let me just give you a few practical advices how to learn more about this wonderful person. You know, he was genius in a many ways, but he was not really genius in writing, at least according to my opinion. He published quite a number of books, unfortunately, all of them just unreadable. Yeah, it sometimes happens that um, somebody can be great philosopher, great meditation master, but at the same time, it is not necessary that the same person knows how to write. I mean, he was able to write, but not really properly and clear. That's the reason why his huge, huge volumes mm, impossible to read and understand. Okay, um, his main disciple was another Russian guy. His name was Peter Ospensky. In a sense, he was main disciple, but later on he became co-worker or even we can call it um, partner in development of this very interesting esoteric school. Actually, they call it the fourth way. Let me not explain why they why they gave it such a 
strange name. Ospensky was a mathematician and journalist. He was really good in writing. So later on, it was Ospensky who wrote and published a number of amazing books about life of Gurdjieff, about his philosophy, his teaching, and just about his personality. So it means my advice is if you want to know more about Gurdjieff, do not read Gurdjieff, at least in the very beginning, because you may be disappointed. Better to read Ospensky. Okay, now we have quite a lot of groups and centers which are teaching the way of Gurdjieff, so-called the fourth way. You know, I don't believe that they are really connected with Gurdjieff in spirit. Maybe some outside things, some outside stuff is there, but really it is impossible to teach tradition of Gurdjieff, it sounds strange, but it's really um, the point, because he was very spontaneous, he was master, he was maestro, and he was working with the um, people, with his disciples, in many unusual ways, and it's absolutely impossible to repeat him because it was Gurdjieff. So it means I don't think that it's going to be a good idea to join any group which proclaim that they are part of Gurdjieff tradition. I don't think it's really a good idea. But to read, to learn, to study his life, his way, his philosophy, I am sure that it will be very useful for you, very transforming experience. God bless you.